I believe there are two types of people in this world. The ones who buy ready-made LEGO boxes and the ones who want the simple LEGO bricks to build anything with it. In React Native, there's already plenty of great libraries to create a bottom sheet. But today, I want you to lean on the other side and learn how you can build this all by yourself. Alright, let's do this! So in this video, we're going to build a great bottom sheet in React Native using Reanimated 2. First, let me tell you how it's going to work. The idea is to have a button that opens the bottom sheet, probably half our screen size, that then can be dismissed by swapping down on it. This could serve as a share feature, where you'd have all the sharing options down there, for example. The bottom sheet will be an animated view wrapped with a pan gesture handler just so we can listen to touch events to move and dismiss the sheet. The view should actually be dismissed only if we move it down far enough. Otherwise, it should just bounce back in its previous position. I will start by laying out all the basic pieces we need. A centered view with a button to open the bottom sheet in it and the bottom sheet itself. Remember, the sheet is just a view, animated because it will be interactive and movable. It is wrapped with a pan gesture handler that comes from the React Native gesture handler library so we can move it up and down and define the gesture logic which is what should happen when we start a touch on that view. Now our bottom sheet is not so much at the bottom because there is no top style property yet. The idea is that when we move the view, the top value should change as well. The higher the value, the lower the view will be at. So by default, because we want to hide the view entirely, we could set top to the screen size. This will come from the use window dimensions hook. Now, since I told you that we'll actually animate the top property when we move the view around, we can't just use it as a plain style here. It has to be animated. And in reanimated too, you need to use a shared value for this. The shared value should store the top value that will be updated alongside our gesture later on. So let's start by creating this shared value with the use shared value hook and set its default value to the screen height. Because it's an animated style, to attach it to our view, we need to wrap it in a reanimated style that comes with use animated style. Remember that it's just a function that returns animated styles based on shared values, which is our case here with the top shared value. Perfect, our bottom sheet is now hidden, patiently waiting down there, so it's time to animate it when we tap the button. To show it, we just need to animate the top property. I set it to dimensions.height divided by 2, simply because I want the bottom sheet to stop at half the screen. If you want it to be full screen, you could animate it to 0. Also, I used a spring configuration I found online that seemed to be quite fine for this example, but you can definitely play with the parameters if you'd like it to be more bouncy. We might reuse this configuration, so let's store it outside our component. Great, it opens. All we're missing now is to define our gesture handler. Again, when touching the view, it should move it up and down alongside our touch, but also dismiss the sheet if we swipe down. Let's start with the movement. We need to update the top shared value when our finger moves so that it follows it along. To do this, we'll add the onActive touch event to the gesture handler that is fired whenever our touch moves. This is where we can update our shared value. The problem with this solution is that we see the view jumping in every way. That is because translation Y contains the accumulated distance between where we start our touch and where we are at now. Because this value can be 30 if we moved our finger 30 pixels up, the top property would then be set at 30, which is not what we want. Instead, it should keep the original top value and add 30 pixels to it. So we need a way to store the original top value before this whole gesture starts. This is what a context can help us with. It can store any data you want and will be passed along the other touch events. 
So if when we start the gesture, we store the initial top value in that context box, we then can reuse that value and combine it with the translation Y value. I'll show you how it looks like. First, inside the onStart event, which is fired right after the gesture started, we can store our current top value inside our context. Because we also need to name it, let's call it start top. Now, this context becomes available through all our touch events, so inside on active, if we add a second argument to the callback, we can get that value back and add it to translation Y. And see, it works. It stopped moving all around when starting a gesture. Instead, it now uses the previous top position as a starting point for our touch. Context is very useful here, and it works like a gesture memory, if you will. Our bottom sheet is looking good. All we're left with is when the touch ends, we should check if it should be dismissed or not. To do so, we just need to make a decision based on the top position at that moment. If it's, let's say, 200 pixels lower than the initial position, we should dismiss it. Otherwise, we should set the top shirt value back to the initial value, so half our screen size. I will just add the code since I think this is pretty straightforward. In the first close, we're just checking if our current top value is higher than half our screen size plus 200 pixels. If it's that low, we update top to the full screen size just so it gets hidden. If we're not dismissing the bottom sheet, it should just be sent back to the initial position, which is dimensions that height divided by two. Now that you get the logic, I will just add something to animate it all better using a spring animation in both cases. But instead of adding the width spring here, I can even do something better. If you wrap a style property in an animated style with a width spring or width timing function, it will automatically animate this property using that function every time it changes. So since we're updating the top value here, if we add width spring inside the animated style, it will spring animate this change. All right, let me recap briefly what we've done here. We started with simple blocks, a button that opens our bottom sheet and the sheet itself. We wrapped it with a pan gesture handler component that takes an animated gesture handler. And because we knew there would be a value that should be animated to play with the bottom sheet position, we created a shared value, top, that would store the current position of the animated view. After using an animated style to link our shared value to the view component, we started playing with animations and updated the top value when pressing the button. Finally, we added some logic inside our gesture handler that keeps track of our touch position and reflects it through our shared value. The bottom sheet is then dismissed if when our touch ends, the value is lower than the initial position of our view past 200 pixels. Otherwise, it just animated back to the same initial position before starting our gesture. Okay, I truly hope you found this helpful and if you did, there's a lot more to come on this channel. Remember to subscribe if you don't want to miss it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.